Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. We've got two battles for you today, because they're both kind of short, which just seems to be the way World of Tanks battles are going these days. The first one here is from Solid Mitch Rap. That's his brand new, shiny, and extremely garishly painted T-62A. Now, Mitch didn't actually send this battle in himself, his dad did. Which may give you some clues to why we're going to be watching this battle in the first place. As mentioned, this is... This might even be the very first game that we played in this brand new T-62A. He's definitely enjoying it. Because you can get that sometimes. It doesn't matter how good or bad a tank actually is. If you just don't get it at first and you have some bad games in it, you're always going to think that it's a bad tank. I had that with my E100. Um, and the reverse is true. You can have a tank that's kind of mediocre or just not very good, but if you have some good initial games in it, you're going to think it's a good tank. Fortunately for Solid Mitch Rap, he's about to enjoy the best of both worlds, because the T-62A is most definitely a very good tank. And if this is his first, or possibly one of his first games in it, I'm not entirely sure which, I know he definitely hasn't had the tank for very long, he's definitely going to be coming away from this battle at least with a very good impression of what this tank is capable of. Friendly line tank up ahead has found himself a Progetto and is backing off because he doesn't want to die. Mitch is definitely not backing off. If he can stay within 50 metres of the Progetto, he will remain proximity spotted. Meanwhile, the Progetto's teammate in the TVP is clearly thinking, come on boys, we've got this, who's with me? And has severely miscalculated exactly how much opposition is waiting for them in the ditch. The Progetto clearly subscribing to the theory that it doesn't matter if you're doing the wrong thing, as long as you're all doing the wrong thing together, it might all work out. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes that does work, just not today. Honestly, it can work. I mean, if your team are all going the wrong way, as long as you're all going the wrong way together and you keep going, eventually you'll end up in the right place. Because, <laughs> you know, the map that you're playing on is only so big. Eventually you'll run out of wrong places to be. But if you all scatter and go individual wrong ways, with maybe some of you going the right way, you'll never have enough concentration of force to achieve anything, even if you are going the right way. I mean, it doesn't always work, obviously. That's why lemming trains are a thing. But sometimes, as long as everybody's doing the wrong thing together, it can actually produce results. It's not the kind of strategy you should plan for, of course. <laughs> and it definitely didn't work for the TVP and the Progetto. Anyway, what's going on? What, what, what are you doing here, Mitch? Apart from, uh, did you run out of brave pills or something? Because things were going very, very well for you at the start, and now you seem to be being overly cautious. Well, again, there's a reason for that, which we'll discover at the end of the video. There's nothing left here for you to shoot at. In fact, the enemy team are taking a bit of a spanking. You're four kills to one. You might wish to move and find some enemy tanks to kill. There he goes. Good kid. Oh, another spoiler. Well, not much of a spoiler. I'm sure many of you have already figured it out by now. Oh, good hit. There's not an awful lot of target there for him to shoot at, and now it's dead. You're going to have to start moving, Mitch. You are running out of things to kill. If in doubt, just follow the sound of the guns. Or, you know, look at the minimap. Both work. Here he goes. This is what we want to see. Go on, Mitch. Get stuck in. Fortunately, this is a very fast medium tank, so if you do find yourself sitting alone with nothing better to do than count the daisies, it does not take very long to find yourself some trouble. The enemy team are having a bit of a fight back. We'll have to do something about that. Hello, Mr. Doom Turtle. I appear to have caught you in the flank. Let's uh, do as much damage as possible before you get yourself into cover, and then drive straight out of cover again. <laughs> okay. Yes, the enemy fight back was brief and, um, and not particularly fighty. And here comes the LT-432, or the baby T-62A. He's completely ignoring Mitch, but he's determined to kill that TS-5. And he could have done it as well. And then he lost his bottle. <laughs> I mean, it would have cost him his life. There's no way he would have survived getting one more shot off. But he's going to die anyway, so he may as well have gotten himself a kill in the process. Fortunately for the TS-5, his sense of, oh my god, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, overcame his sense of, let's live fast, die young, and leave a good-looking corpse, because chicks dig scars and glory lasts forever. So 
So he ran off like the coward he is on 10 hit points. Actually, Jingles, it was 19 hit points. Eh, details. He's going to be dead in a minute. Nobody's going to care. Mitch is going for it again. Ooh, right in time to get, as they say in South Africa, or certainly used to when I was there, scopped by artillery. Repair kit up. Grabs himself another kill. On the move. Ooh, choice of targets. Can't do anything immediately. I'll protect the Indian Panzer from the Doom Turtle. Yep, dead. But the Doom Turtle has just fired, is facing the wrong way, and is never going to outmaneuver a medium tank. Unless that medium tank is an AMX 40. So he's dead too. Ducks in behind the wreck of the Indian Panzer, forcing the Scorpion to take a shot at the turret, which bounces harmlessly off. There's another kill. Oh, hello. There's another kill. Three enemy machines left, two of which are artillery. There's one. Come on, Mitch, you're never going to win this by capping. Get in there, it's only artillery. And he's already taken a hit, which means he's a one-shot kill. If he could just... Ooh, okay, not a one-shot kill. Never mind, he loaded the high explosive. Always a mistake. Always a mistake. Load the high explosive when you're going after artillery, because you're guaranteed to hit the one part of it that has enough armour to not be penetrated and armor piercing would have been better but he does get the kill on the second artillery which leaves just one enemy tank left which the rest of his teammates finish off but that's okay that's fine he didn't need another kill anyway another kill would have just been greedy you have to leave something for the rest of the team to fight over so was that a perfect battle no of course it wasn't absolutely not it wasn't even close um you could probably accuse solid mitch of being a little overcautious at certain points during that battle and you'd probably be correct but i'm prepared to give him a pass anyway for a couple of reasons first he got an ace tanker a randy walters medal a high caliber and a top gun he got more kills did more damage and earned more experience than anybody else on both teams plus you also have to take into account the fact that this is his, well i say fact i'm not entirely sure whether or not this is true his first game in the T-62A? It might be. Um, I know it's a brand new tank as far as he's concerned, so it's either his first, second or third game in it. And that's a good point to make as well. But the best point I feel, and the one that I haven't mentioned yet, which I'm sure some of you have already guessed, is that he's only nine years old. Nine years old, and he's already a better World of Tanks player than I, and I'm sure most of us are ever going to be. And his dad wasn't coaching him either, by the way. His dad was not present while he was playing this battle. He only saw the replay afterwards and chose to send it in to me. All of the decisions that you saw Mitch make during this game all came from his own nine-year-old head. So, yeah, I'm prepared to forgive him a little bit of caution here and there based on the fact that he's only nine and he was still capable of putting that performance in. So, it's a good job, Mitch. Unless Mitch is actually the dad and the nine-year-old son is playing his dad's account under his dad's name which is technically against the game's terms of service. But honestly, I don't think anybody really cares. Plus, if you think about it, that's a really, really sneaky way for Mitch Sr. to get his stats padded on his new T-62A by Mitch Jr., who's clearly better at it than he is. <laughs> so either way, that's good job, Mitch. Right, moving on swiftly to another battle that is not being played by a nine-year-old, at least as far as I know, and is definitely not in a brand new shiny T-62A. This is Minimat 72001 in a tier 6 encounter battle map here on the Westfield map in one of my favourite tanks, the Cromwell. The Cromwell is not a great tank. I mean, it doesn't have enough armour and the gun isn't really accurate or reliable enough for it to be considered a great tank in my opinion, but it is a pretty good tank and it does lead to a great tank, the Comet, which is the reason why Minimat is playing the Cromwell. He really wants the Comet. And the Comet is basically just a tier 7 Cromwell. And you could argue, and you'd be right, that in that respect, the Comet also shares some of the weaknesses of the Cromwell. It still has bad armour, although the turret front can be kind of trollish. It's just as quick and manoeuvrable though, and while it definitely gets worse matchmaking by virtue of being a tier higher, the fact that it is at tier 7 and not at tier 6 means it can address probably the biggest weakness of the Cromwell its inaccuracy while firing on the move, because the Comet can fit a vertical stabiliser. Which means it's not only better at firing on the move, and is able to effectively circle strafe larger targets at anything other than point-blank range, but the aiming reticle... I mean, the aiming time isn't great, but 
having the vertical stabiliser means that the aiming reticle never gets as big as it does on the Cromwell in the first place, so effectively your aiming time is better. It's also not as fragile as the Cromwell. And I'm not talking about the lack of armour. I mean, both tanks have pretty bad armour. I mean, the Comet doesn't just roll over and die on impact with the terrain the way the Cromwell does, because they're both very, very fast tanks, and it is not unusual for both tanks to catch serious amounts of air when they go over a bump or an incline at speed. And in the Cromwell, that can be fatal when you land on the other side. I've died in Cromwells on many occasions doing exactly that. 600 hit points gone in an instant. Just because I went airborne for half a second. While French tanks, doing exactly the same thing next to me, zoom off into the sunset without even taking suspension damage, let alone losing half of their hit points. So yeah, I like the Cromwell. It's a fun tank. It's not a bad tank, but it definitely falls just short of being a great tank. By the way, do you notice the VK3001P? There he is, on full health, right on the flank of the town in the middle of the map. The fact that he is there, and still more or less basically on full health, means that any enemies that Minimap may have been concerned about in front of him on this hill are not there, otherwise that VK would already be dead, suffering exactly the same problems that the enemy tanks here are suffering, because Minimap is in this position. So, Minimap could quite easily be flanking around and getting behind the enemy team up there. However, the fact that he didn't means that he is able to respond to something else that just happened, which nobody else on the team appears to be doing. They have now been completely outflanked by enemy tanks rushing around the other side, who have just butchered all of the artillery, and now have basically caught the rest of his team in something of a pincer movement. With Matt pretty much being the only member of his team in a position to do anything about it. Now, whether or not Matt's ended up in this position through good luck or good judgment is largely irrelevant at this point, because he is in this position, and he is able to do something about it. Although his 75mm gun does not have a huge amount of alpha damage, it is rapid firing, and it's reasonably accurate. And since he's not moving, he doesn't have to worry about his lack of a vertical stabiliser, his aiming time and his aiming reticle aren't bad. Plus, there's something else that he's able to do in this position that you would not be able to do in a French tank. Well, not a French tank with an oscillating turret. That overhang at the back of the turret means that French tanks in this position wouldn't even be able to aim at enemy tanks on the far side of the valley. That overhanging ammunition stowage at the back of the oscillating turrets prevents you from elevating the gun far enough up. When you're on a downward slope like this, you just can't get the gun elevation to aim at targets on the far side of a slope on the other side of a valley like this. In order to make this work, you'd have to turn the tank around facing uphill and then rotate the turret and shoot over the back of the tank just to fire at targets on the same level as you on the other side of a valley. There's only two of them left now, of course. Matt in the Cromwell and the Sherman Firefly. Against five enemies? See if we can make that fall. Enemy the team are complaining about him, of course. Starting with the P26, but basically anybody else who hasn't already quit and queued up for the next battle, the Churchill, for example, they're going to get stuck in too. Looks like the Firefly is about to go down. Three enemies remaining. Yep, they've lost the Firefly. It's now Matt against three enemies. The good news is that only one of them is an actual tank. Well, I say tank, you know. It's a Wolverine, but the Wolverine has a decent 76mm gun. I mean, it's comparable to the gun that Mini Matt himself is using. But the two artillery on the enemy team are probably going to be the biggest problem because the Cromwell has no armour and it's likely to take full damage from high explosive shells. There's some fantastic advice coming in from his teammates in chat there. Remember, these are the guys that were supposed to be on his side. In particular, the Churchill, go and help the Cap. The Firefly wasn't capping, he was getting killed by the enemy tanks who were capping. Moron, what are you doing? Why didn't you support the cap? Well, he has done 1200 damage, more than any of you lot, by the way, in support of you lot while you were getting surrounded, outflanked, and failing to cap. You're too slow just to die, you idiot. Well, he's not too slow, is he? I mean, he took a lot of nasty damage there from the M44. But he's not in any particular rush to die. There goes the Cromwell. 
Now the M44 is a fast reloading artillery, but the Cromwell, while it doesn't have a vertical stabiliser at this kind of range, is absolutely going to win the circus strafe fight. That just leaves the Lefer, 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 who is a very rapid firing artillery and very accurate and has absurdly good view range, none of which are factors that are going to help it in the close range circle strafe dogfight against the Cromwell because it moves like an arthritic slug. And um, where's the Churchill in chat now, by the way? Oh yes, suspiciously quiet. Just a GG from the M44 that the rest of the team left to die on the flank as they were busy being encircled. And I think a GG is an entirely fair accolade. I mean, was it great? No, no, it wasn't great. Were there things that Minimac could and probably should have done better? Absolutely. But was it good enough? Well, I don't know. Let's take a look. Because it seems like it was good enough. I mean, he did win. He did do twice the damage of anybody else on the team. He did get six kills and a top gun, and he did almost get a thousand base experience. Yeah, it seems like it was good enough. So all things considered, I think I'm just going to have to say congratulations. I mean, we can't all be great. Some of us can be great some of the time, but none of us can be great all of the time. But we don't have to be great. We just have to be good enough. So, Minimat, glad you're enjoying the Cromwell. It is a fun tank, even if it falls just that little step short of greatness. But all of that will go away when you finally unlock the Comet, which is a great tank. And I can't wait to see what you think of it. Meanwhile, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And as always, take care. And I'll catch you next time.